Hi, my name is John Atkinson. I'm the editor-in-chief of Sterefar magazine, and I'm here with Jack Ockley-Brown, head of acoustics at KEF. And Jack has been setting up the reference fives in my listening room, but also we have a review planned of one of the least expensive KEF speakers for Q150, which Herb Reichert will be auditioning relatively soon. So, Jack, the Q series, this is KEF's affordable range? Yes, so this is you know, our entry point into the KEF sound in a hi-fi sense. Right. So, in, from an engineering point of view, it's I, I always quite like doing it because working on high-end things is, is a really good challenge in, in one aspect, but trying to get some of that sound into something that I can then recommend to my friends yeah. <laughs> is is even, you know, in a way more exciting and you know very challenging too. Right. So, I mean, the LS50, which we reviewed some years back, that was, even though it's a relatively small speaker featuring a U KEF UniQ driver, yes. was a true high-end product that you didn't cut any corners other than making it small. Yeah. But with the Q series, how are you going to get from that to something that's affordable? Yeah, so it is quite a challenge. Uh, one of the things that I find quite fascinating about loudspeakers is that some things are expensive in their design. Yeah. So if you're going to use particularly specialised materials or processes, that will make a loudspeaker expensive. But a lot of uh, the performance can come down to just details of the shapes of things mm -hmm. or, or how you're doing something or where you're putting it. So actually when you distill what's in the LS50 down, a lot of the performance we can get in a, in a much lower cost product. Right, because you use the LS50 as a development and learning tool. Yes. Yeah, so for example, in the LS50, the driver is positioned right in the middle of the box and that's intentional to control the standing waves and the port on the rear and again in a position which is optimized so that you don't get too much mid-range leakage of the standing waves. Mm -hmm. Now those those things are just about knowledge and we can put them into any speaker we make. So the 150 is actually quite a you know good parallel with the LS50 because they're basically the same size and they have the same size driver. Um, and the Q150 is really the next update of what was the Q100. And it's actually a long time since we developed everything for that. That was back in 2010, around then. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, it was before we did all this work on the LS50, before we did our series, before reference. And so in each of those projects, we've had developments uh, where it's appropriate and we can put them into uh, lower cost pro uh, projects. Right. Now, the, the, um, the Blade, the LS50, these are made in Maidstone, Kent, yes, right? that's right. But the Q-series are made in China yes we're owned uh, by a, a group called Gold Peak right um, so the factory where we produce uh, all of our KEF products in China is a Gold Peak factory so yeah. it's effectively part of uh, the same company right. they've owned you for what 25 years yes. now yeah so you have a very close relationship with the engineers in, in yes in China. we do so I mean the this kind of different processes when you're engineering a product and you obviously have the the initial part which is very open and very researching, right. um, which we handle in Maidstone, um, you know, we then end up with something which has to be produced. And so we need an engineering team helping us in China to take drawings of parts to suppliers, discuss with them, and they really need to understand what we're trying to do. And we have a great team out there. Yeah. And it's the same guys uh, you know, working out there you know, for as long as I've been with KEF. So they really understand you know, what we're trying to do with parts and uh, you know, know exactly how to make things in a way that we can uh, produce them in quantity and right. in very high quality. Yeah, there's a management theory, which is, you know, how do you get people working together when they're separated by thousands of miles? Well, they said, think of a school of fish. If everybody has the same goal and agrees on that goal, the fish are all swimming in the same direction. And but when it stops working is when one fish decides to go that way or that way, mm. and then it all falls apart. But it's the sharing of goals yeah. that is so important in that that working environment. I, I think that's right. The, the other thing I would add to that is, is trust. You, yeah. you have to trust each other's expertise. So if, if you, you, know, you, and that doesn't come overnight, you have to build it up. So mm. we're very fortunate that we, you know, we have the same constant team because, you know, those guys out there know that if from the UK we say this aspect is really critical, then we're not just doing it for fun. It really is critical. Yeah. And vice versa, if they come back to us and they say we're having big problems with this aspect of the design, right. 
we know they're not messing about and yeah. we'll focus on it as well so that I agree with you it's a, it's a tricky to get right but we we do have a really good situation at the moment yeah so the, the Q150 similar camelot size to the LS50 also a uniq co single uniq coaxial unit where the tweeter and mid-range are in one unit how different is the Q150 co uniq unit from the LS50 it's very unit. similar so it uses uh, the same uh, size of cone right it uses a motor system which is got the same size voice call but some of the details are slightly different yeah the tweeter is the same size and the tangerine waveguide on the front is identical yeah so you know if you put them side by side you will obviously see differences but there's more similarities yeah than differences um, so you know that has been quite a good target for us to have we we know the LS50 has been very successful and it's a great loudspeaker yeah so it has been our benchmark for designing the 150 as well we can put them next to each other in the listening room and, and see how close we can yeah. get. Just to return to the tweeter, that tangerine waveguide, when I was looking at the um, it, the uh, sample you had, mm. it appears to block off quite a lot of the dome, the tweeter dome's radiation. Yes, it, it's 50% actually, as right. much as that. So, so the actual little ribs on the tangerine are actually profiled to be wider at the base, narrow at the top. Yes. So that's kind of why they're it's acting, making it act like a compression drive. Yes, exactly. So it's a very, very gentle version of a compression drive. Yeah. In Pro Audio, you would cover uh, you know, maybe 90% of, of the dome to get a really big compression. Right. Thing. And you're, you know, in that case, looking for extremely high efficiencies. Um, along with that come a lot of problems which are hard to overcome. So we're doing you know something which is right. similar in theory but very gentle but you do get a slight efficiency gain we do so it's uh, roughly about 3 db from about 8 kilohertz upwards mm -hmm. so it only kicks in where these channels uh, yeah. do something effectively uh, effective acoustically okay how how much of a q150 is going to cost the, the q150 is uh, 550 dollars a pair so a third the price of the ls50 yes. so yeah it's as I said at the kind of start of our conversation. I, I like working on these projects because if you're a hi-fi enthusiast, then the LS50 is something you could, you know, f spend some money on, right. save up and get. But this level of product is actually something that just somebody who's really into audio isn't particularly a hi-fi you know, nut. They could afford to buy. And yeah, yeah, it does you know, make it kind of exciting to develop. So that would it be fair to get? 90% of the LS50 for 30% of the price? Oh, well, I, well that's a really subjective <laughs> question. I, you get a great sounding loudspeaker. And be, we're keen to see what you guys make okay, of it. Okay, great sounding loudspeaker. Let's see what Herb Reichert thinks of it. Thank you, Jack. Thanks, John.